right, good morning. Um, we are on our way to the San Jacinto Monument and Battleship Texas, and we just exited I-10 East onto Lynchburg Road, and it looks like we get to take the ferry. And this is Beverly's first time to ever drive on a ferry boat, so this is a brand new experience. And uh, up in the distance there, you can see the Sandy Central Monument, so that's where we're headed. Waiting on the ferry boat. Lynchburg Ferry, established. 1822. Pretty cool. Here we go. We're getting on the ferry. Good deal. <laughs> and this thing is teeny tiny. Yeah, just get on up in there. That's it, baby. Hey, look at that thing coming. Oh, wow. A barge. <laughs> we got to get packed, packed, packed up in here. You can see the tops of the battleship Texas over there in the distance. Oh, I do see it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there may have only been four vehicles waiting to get on the ferry. I don't know if they're going to wait until this thing's completely full or not, but we're definitely waiting for the big barge <laughs> to get out of the way before we move. All right, well, we got to the ferry at just the right time. They were hooked up and unloading just as we pulled up, so we're on the ferry and we're just screaming across the turning basin to right over there. <laughs> cool. Here we go. Yay, we did it. You survived. Yeah. <laughs> Doing okay. Neato. All right. Here oh. we are. It's been a long time. Ten years since we've been here. We're going to go uh, find a picnic -a spot. Take a break and eat a little breakfast before we go visit the ship. It's just now opened. I see pick a nick of tables right over there. Cool. All right, so here we are under the shady tree, picnic table, and the battleship Texas in the background. We're gonna take a break and have ourselves a little breakfast. Then we're gonna go visit the ship and then we're going to go across the way over there and visit the San Jacinto Monument. All right, here we are. I got it all laid out. Uh, hello, flies. Anyway, uh, the budding is new. New package for the budding meat. Pretty cool. And we're making sandwiches and having chips and <coughs> bread and butter pickles. So there are plenty of picnic tables in the shade. 
There's the parking lot right across the street from the battleship and the restroom is right there. So nice and convenient to have a picnic before you go visit the battleship. Before we go in to do the battleship Texas, Jeff wanted to go and look at some of the gravestones that are around here. There's a couple of uh, small graveyards. And they chose this spot to bury the soldiers of the Republic of Texas that died here. This one's the, the biggest one. Yep, yep. Some more over here. Family graves here. Needs a little tending too, but going to walk over here and check the rest of these out. There's some markers over here. There's a bunch to see out here. I'm going to go over there in just a second. Well, there you go. Uh, CG-56, USS San Jacinto commissioned this stone. 23 January 1988, pretty cool. They named the ship after this battle site. Well, this is pretty nice. We'll get some pictures of this. If you can't read all of these. Wow, somebody just left their stuff here. That's a rifle and a canteen and a bullet mold and a baseball and a bayonet. <laughs> wow. There's some more of the stones the stones are for the campsites for the different companies that fought at the Battle of San Jacinto. There's a pretty good shot. Nice memorial to the, uh, let's see, monument dedicated January 28, 1993 to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the founding of the Order of the Knights of San Jacinto by Sam Houston, the President of the Republic of Texas in 1843. There's the San Jacinto Monument in the background. We'll work our way over here to this grave site. Days of Bala Plaza. I'm sure hoping we're getting these recorded with the sunlight in the background, but it's a memorial to uh, people that are known to have been buried here. Questions about any of that stuff? Oh, let's see. Or if you want to pick up anything. Water bottle? That. Yes. There we go. Made out of a gourd. Uh, this would be 
A lot of the Texans carried these. Oh, yeah? Have canteens. Even yeah. some of the Mexican soldiers would have carried these because gourds, gourds were plentiful, but canteens were uh, few. Yeah. And the canteens they had were mostly made with wood. I can imagine. Bowie knife? Yeah. You can touch anything except the weapons, and the park won't let us <laughs> do that. I got you. But yeah, that's a typical Bowie knife. There you go. That's how you would fight with the Bowie knife. You hold it upside down. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because you, this part's dull, the rest of it's sharp. And using this to block the blow of your opponent, oh, okay. the clip corner, you're trying to cut their hand. Bar of soap? And then you want to move in close. Right. And in Big fat wood ash. Flam. <laughs> <Flam>. Yeah. <laughs> We were about to come over here and tell you guys, hey, there's a table over there with some stuff That's on us. it. That's we didn't know that y'all knew it. Yeah, yeah we're waiting yeah. on. Any idea what this is? Two school groups. That's a, it's a piece of pork fat. Salt pork. Okay. Yeah. Bacon. So, okay. It's actually salt, yeah. Pork bacon, you can see how the bacon is. Yeah. Powder horn, measuring cup. Okay, mm -hmm. just, they just carry it like this? And the sword. And then just That's his personal uh, you should, well, you item uh, that he brought up, so he can tell you more about that. But he, normally they'd cut it in smaller pieces. Since 1818, <laughs> Nathan no Star. Oh, there we go. Yeah, when you salt this, it pulls all the flavor out. Yeah. No more King Nathan Star cavalry saber. This is actually an authentic weapon. Really? Yes. Who would have carried that? Texians. Matter of fact, at Goliad, when they were doing excavation of the Goliad, they dug up a piece of one of the scabbards to it. To one of these sabers. I see. So they were carried here. They were also they carried them on up through the Civil War. Where were they made? Up in uh, where was it? Up north. New England somewhere. Yeah, I'd Philadelphia imagine. maybe. Yeah. But it's up in the northeast up there. So an armor for uh, like uh, the U.S. Army, yeah. and they made their way down here, bits oh, yeah. and pieces of them. Oh, a lot of U.S. came down here. As a matter of fact, most of them did. And the uh, gun bag. What do you have there? This is a reproduction. This would be a long rifle. Blue Ridge. It's the title of the name. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than an authentic Blue Ridge rifle, but we got it because it was a fire sale. And I work for the state, so anytime you can save some money, you'll get it. Well, there you go. It's a flintlock hunting rifle. You don't have any. Carried, you don't have any flints. Ah, uh, we do. We just don't have one in them. I got yeah. you. Try to. What caliber? 50 caliber is the barrel, and it shoots a 49 caliber ball made out of that right there. I got you. This is the bullet mold that goes to it. All oh, right. And this is an actual rifle, so there's rifling in Rifling. It. Whereas most of the weapons that were used were smooth bore muskets, shotguns, fowlers, that type of thing. Going to headquarters. It's very thin. Yeah, this is really a weak spot on here, and it's mm -hmm. very easy to break. So you see a lot of the authentic ones, you'll see a lot of times there's a repair got, there. Got more tang coming down on some of them, mm -hmm. then, and then, yeah. then again on more the bottom, so. I guess it goes all the way to the back of the... Uh, yeah, but yeah. this is a very weak area very right thin. here. Is there a patch box in this or no? no. Not enough wood, I guess. No, uh -uh. That's nice. You no, know, most of them did not have patch boxes. Some of the mountain rifles just had a little round area here for the grease. And that's a... Do they make left-handed flintlocks? This one, a flintlock hunting rifle like that, even up into the 1830s, is going to be handmade for you by a gunsmith. I see. So you're going to go to the gunsmith, you're going to, you're going to say, I want, a, I want a hunting rifle. He's going to say, okay. He's going to ask you a lot of questions. One, what are you hunting? Mm -hmm. He's going to measure how tall you are. He's going to measure your arm's length. Mm -hmm. And he'll measure, do you shoot right? Do you shoot left? He's going to custom make you a hunting rifle. So it's going to take him about three months. Um, and this is a, a very prized occupation from colonial periods all the way well up until the 1850s uh, because we really haven't got to the point yet where factories are jeering out these standardized hunting rifles. Now, and uh, military weapons, yes. About the year of this rifle this is approximately? This one would have been common from anywhere from 1800 all the way up to about the 1850s. Um, but yeah, it's going to take him three months. The last thing he'll do when he makes the hunting rifles, he's going to measure the bore hmm. and then he'll make you a bullet mold. So that bullet mold goes to that rifle. And this was one of the problems the Texas Army had in 1836, is these guys are all not equipped by the Texas government. They show up Bring wearing their, their own clothes, brought their own horse, brought their own food, <clears throat> brought their own weapons. So you got guys out here fighting with modern day equivalents of 30 caliber weapons all the way up to 80 caliber weapons. 
And so if you're going to be the guy supplying all the bullets to the Texas Army, this is a nightmare. So what do you do? You hit them out hunks of lead. Yep. And they melt them down and make their own bullets. That's it. Melt it in the ladle. Yeah. When it melts out, you pour it in here. They got their gunpowder from the United States. They liked uh, okay. American gunpowder. They thought Mexican gunpowder was poorly made. Uh, and the, the place they loved to get gunpowder from uh, was from the DuPont Corporation out of Rhode Island. Well, there you go. And DuPont, DuPont still exists. They make there. cleaning materials and yeah. missile guidance systems today. <laughs> <laughs> supplies were kind of short in Mexico. Yeah. And all gunpowder is, it's saltpeter, which mm -hmm. uh, is potassium Charcoal nitrate. and stuff Charcoal like that mixed in. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep. Well, the Mexicans used a high, a higher percentage of charcoal, which made it an inferior powder the Texans wouldn't use there. Yeah, they just, They considered it worthless. They'd burn it. They'd, yes. they'd dump it on the ground. They wouldn't even take it. Oh, yeah. They take the bullets uh, from the Mexican guns. On the Mexican gun, that's the weapon we have on that table over there. It's what caliber British is that British-made, brown best, ah. four musket. It fires a 69 caliber ball, mm. but of course, if your weapon doesn't handle a 69 caliber of ball, course, you that can't was use all... that. But you take the lead, you just melt it down, and make more bullets out of you know, it. I mean, that's all you yeah. do with it's it. It's actually a 75 caliber, but they shot 69 caliber balls in there. They just put extra yeah, water, because it was... extra patch. No, no, I just let it. Patch it. Oh, rattle right. around. That's oh, why that weapon over smooth there. Bore. Yeah, that weapon, smoothbore, and it's a it's the highest uh, firing weapon in the world in 1836, mm. roughly. You get three shots in a minute. Boy. That one right there is going to take up to two to three minutes to load and fire one shot. Excuse me. Such a tight. Well, that was that was fortunate. Had a couple of volunteer guides out here with some interesting artifacts. Work knowledge. All right, I'm just going to stop here and take an overall picture of the ship. Five inch gun set up for anti aircraft. Swab the deck. Quad 40 millimeter Bofors anti aircraft. Trains they lift the uh, seaplanes back on board with, and they launch them from that gun right there. Well, that's pretty neat. Looks like uh, the battleship Texas is part of the ships on the warships. Pretty cool. Sorry about that, for some reason the, uh, the camera was zoomed all the way out. Big old anchor hanging off the front of the ship. Inside the bakery. Big dome mixer, one over there, ovens. Let's see if I can get a picture of the cruise galley. Hey, Beverly. Beverly. 
side ladders. Everything up here is closed off, so don't worry about it. It's just, huh? Cream chip beef. Mm mm mm. S O S. Shit on the shingle. Some of the bunks. I think so. Barbershop. Keep that hair on tight. Sick day. A little bit more comfy beds. That's neat. They got period radio coming in over the speaker system there. That's pretty cool. underneath their bunks so when they got shore leave they look as good as they could. Yeah. Oh, ammo storage for the uh, 20 millimeter. Potties? Yep. Yeah. wonder where the showers are. Must be in another part. I'm trying to focus on the glass here. I don't know what it's doing. Officer's head. sit on top of and it goes all the way to the bottom of the ship. Look at the thickness of this door. Look at that.
Oh yeah, there you go. You can see where the base of that turret Holy goes God. down. And another deck all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> well, that was the Battleship Texas. Made the, what, what day is it? Today is the, uh... 16, 15? 2018. I uh, used to be able to get down into the third deck, down, but they've got it all shut down for repairs. May 14th. And we're going to go visit the gift shop on the way out. Bye bye, Battleship Texas. Okay, here's the, the souvenirs we've gotten from the Battleship Texas. It was uh, nice visiting the ship again. Uh, first thing, I remember when the Texas uh, Parks used to print out nine receipts. Uh -huh. I don't know what they had in mind, but you'd get a receipt showing you got a receipt for the receipt. This is much, much better. Yeah. One receipt. Okay, anyway. Got. Awesome. USS Texas BB 35. It's a good looking hat. It is. And. Color patch. Mm hmm. Like the Texas. Yeah. Mm hmm. I see. And. Okay. Gray and khaki. And Battleship Texas. And coin. Coin. Okay. Oh, wow. It's got the state seal on the back. Mm -hmm. Kind of. And a hat pin, Battleship Texas hat pin, cool. which I'm going to put on that. That's it. Cool. All right. There was the Battleship Texas. Now we're going to drive across the street and go to the San Jacinto Monument. Nice big, uh, what do they call it? Reflection pond? What is yeah, it? Reflection pond. Out in front. Get a better shot of it when we get out there. Campsite boulders are all over the place. Cavalry skirmish the day before the battle on the way to the monument. Oh, yeah. And here we are at the uh, San Jacinto Monument, and this thing just keeps getting bigger. We are across the street, of course, from the Battleship Texas. Of course, the base of the uh, monument is inscribed all the way around, so we're going to get pictures of all of this, not, not take a video out of all of it. This is the Time capsule that was buried when this monument was was uh, built in 1936, and I think that bronze out there at the edge of the parking lot is where it is. So in uh, April of 2036, they're going to open it. I don't know whether the camera's picking this up. Parts of the printing on the outside of the building. And the Six Flags of Texas. Never have.
building at Columbia in which Texas congressman met 1836. We've been here before. This is first capital at Austin, 1839 to 1858. Uh, I can't read that. Main Street in Houston showing capital uh, that was 1837 to 1839 and John, uh, John H. or Harris Home? Harris County. Peach Point at Perry's Landing, Brazoria County, home of Stephen F. Austin's sister. Second capital at Austin, 1856 to 1887. Oh, the Steamboat House. And then Steamboat House, something, Huntsville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just got through at the San Jacinto Monument. What'd you get? The map of the San Jacinto background. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. Shows all the troop movements. Okay. And I guess it describes it and uh, mm -hmm. stuff all around there. Okay. Shows where it is. And Good. A patch. Okay, San Jacinto Monument. Oh, a nice hat. Oh, a Texas flag on the back. That's pretty cool. Texas. That's a good looking hat. It is. <laughs> um, the pedal. Oh, okay. From the base of the. Okay. Alright, so we're uh, on. And, and uh, dang it, I'm just wondering, 
How many people call this building the pineapple building? And comment below. <laughs> I call it the pineapple building. The top of this thing looks like a top of a pineapple. Oh well. So here we are. We're going to go stay at the uh, Best Western Premier, one of the dozens of new hotels they've built out here in Katy. Uh, we checked out the lobby and stuff about a month ago, and we're Best Western members, so we're going to rack up some points and stay here for the next couple of nights. All right, so we got checked in, and... Safe. Ironing board, iron, microwave oven, freezer, refrigerator, Keurig maker, nice, deep sink, Ooh, big shower, mm -hmm. <laughs> Space there, couch, big old TV. God, it smells good in here. It, it smells brand new. Everything in here is brand new. Nice big comfy fluffy bed. Neat. So what is this? This hooks up to the TV, and you can do the. Oh jeez! Look at that! All sorts of stuff. There's plugins everywhere. There's more USB plugs up here. On both sides of the bed. Yeah. Yep, yep. It mm. smells so good. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm here in the lobby of the Best Western that we're staying in. It's a very nice lobby. The front door is just to the right over here. It's nice, really nice seating areas. They have a little board area here if someone wants to have a meeting here in the lobby. We've come in in the afternoon and this fire was going in this fireplace. It was really kind of nice. American Home Shield. It's the rooms to go memorial. Tactile game. And then the business office right here, in case you need to sit and check your email or computer stuff. I have a bar and restaurant type area here, just off the lobby. And they have food in the evenings here. omelette station here in the kitchen area. Just off the lobby also is a little sweet shop. A little convenience store here at the hotel. This is pretty awesome, isn't it, hun? <laughs> Ice creams and frozen dinners and sodas. Microwaves in the room, so. Yeah. 